Tesla today shocked investors, but not in a good way. I am shocked too, and not because of lower than expected deliveries, but because I was expecting with such low deliveries, Tesla to drop 10 to 15%, and we are not seeing that, at least not when I'm recording this. Tesla delivered 386,700 vehicles in Q1. Wall Street was expecting 431,000 roughly, but Troy was quite a bit lower. Troy was at 409,000 vehicles, and many people got mad at me for reporting this, and I said that I would be happy with any number over 410,000, but I report what I see, not what I wish I saw or what you guys wish you saw. I just report what's actually happening and what I think is the most likely thing to happen. And what I see happening is amazing progress by the Tesla FSD team. This clip from yesterday absolutely blew my mind. It shows that FSD is <laughs> certainly possible. I don't think it's just harder than the checks left turn. I think it is. With this delivery number, I would have expected Tesla stock to drop at least 10%, maybe up to 15%, but it's not dropping that much. And I think that's largely because of FSD. I, of course, remain in Tesla stock. I am buying more Tesla stock. Am I thrilled with these deliveries? No. Am I thrilled about the buying opportunity? Still, absolutely. Because Tesla's next generation vehicle is still coming. FSD is likely coming sooner than I expected. Keep in mind, my timeline is before the end of 2030. A shout out goes to Troy. Again, the most accurate estimate out there even though he had the lowest delivery estimate it was 5.7 percent too high his largest error yet another major reason why i am excited about tesla stock in the long term is the energy business and tesla just reported record mega pack installations for the first time on a delivery report which means that business is actually becoming significant enough for tesla to start reporting on it and later on i expect that business to get huge especially if tesla is able to successfully figure out the dry part of the manufacturing process of the batteries. Let's do a little bit of reflection. I'm upset I missed my forecast by this much, but happy that Troy was closest. Troy has been eating a lot of poop all quarter for his realistically bearish forecast. I have two for 18 months since I started criticizing Tesla's brain dead pricing strategy and Elon's antics. But also remember that the whole EV industry right now is a bit slow. For example, BYD reported a quarter over quarter decline in deliveries and it was a significant decline, 300,000 EVs delivered only, which put Tesla to the number one position. Troy gave his reasons for low deliveries. Number one, Model 3 production at Fremont was low due to Model 3 Highland design refresh. Right now, the production is back to, I think, about... 60% of the previous capacity at least and it's still going to be a bit of an issue in Q2 but no longer in Q3 probably. Number two, limited demand for the Model Y in the US resulted in high inventory levels. So many people expected the Model Y refresh to happen sooner in the US but I don't think it's happening this year it's happening next year but in China it's happening this year is my assumption number three initial data suggests deliveries in Europe in Q1 dropped by nine percent compared to Q1 last year Gary says this will renew the narrative about Tesla 60x 2024 PE with negative volume revenue and EPS growth he's not talking anything about 2030 earnings and what Tesla will look like later when FSD is solved. Gary also expects Q2 volumes to fall year over year. So he expects less than 466,000 deliveries next quarter. Someone says this is one reason for the huge push to get V12 out to everyone. They needed to recognize FSD revenue to plug holes in Q1's financials. But this also puts extra pressure on FSD and the FSD team to work even harder. So there is a bit of a silver lining there. And perhaps... This is one reason why Elon Musk has been paying more attention to Tesla. If you look at his X feed, he's tweeting, posting more about Tesla lately. Gary is doing a bit of a victory lap here. Crazy that Troy and I caught so much grief from Tesla bulls for being negative going into the print, but it turns out we weren't negative enough. Maybe it will show Tesla management they need a real sales strategy and can't rely on cutting price alone. Here's an explanation from Tesla directly about what happened. Decline in volumes was partially due to the early phase of the production ramp of the updated Model 3 at our Fremont factory and factory shutdowns resulting from shipping diversions caused by the Red Sea conflict and an arson attack at Gigafactory Berlin. However, keep in mind that Tesla said partially, not mostly. And I haven't seen electric. <laughs> so negative about Tesla 
in the last 12 months. The Q1 2024 deliveries disastrous results this is next level bad even the most pessimistic analysts didn't come close to predicting this level of deliveries all these excuses that tesla is listing are good excuses but they are good for the lower production levels they don't explain the 50,000 vehicle discrepancy between production and deliveries that's a demand problem as clear as it gets i think this should be a wake-up call this is tesla going back about two years in terms of demand now if one of my family members asked me should i buy tesla stock right now if i have a lump sum and I want to minimize my chances of the stock going down and I don't mind missing out on a big run if it does happen I just want to minimize my chances of losing money I would say look at this moving average and wait for the stock to drop 30% below that which right now would be $145 this has not happened yet but it has happened many times before and it has never been a bad idea even in a relatively medium to short term to execute that strategy it doesn't mean that the stock wouldn't have gone lower actually it would have especially in this case but even in the next uh, few months the stock recovered and then it shot up quite a bit higher in the meantime matt smith had his first drive on fsd v 12.3.3 this morning in rainy conditions my main issues with the prior version were slow driving in residential areas and over cautious creeping which caused me to miss a lot of left turn opportunities these issues did not appear to be better on v12.3.3 and i also had more frequent occurrences of phantom braking overall this felt like a small step backwards for me but still a massive step forward from v11 james is expressing himself further this morning americans basically told elon to gfy this quarter I think Elon does not have any farmland, so I'm not sure if he can actually do that. Look who's back. For over a year, I've been warning about this potential reality. Now it's here. It's time for shareholders to assess a blame where due. The Tesla board of directors should be replaced immediately with independent directors as required by law. BYD saw a 43% decline in their EV sales in Q1 versus Q4. Should their board also be replaced so your stake is that this was a brutal quarter but tesla will move past it this whole year could be brutal but looking at tesla's history tesla goes through multi-year brutal periods and this period is no different it's not a stock that just goes up every year by the same amount no 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 it's not like that during these consolidation phases if anything the trend is almost down here and definitely certainly overall down over here before a big jump in the meantime we just learned that tesla knows how to read people's gestures look at this person right here the person gestures and then the car just starts going morgan stanley just posted a new note they say our q2 current delivery estimate of almost 500,000 units implies nearly a 30 percent sequential improvement quarter over quarter Far too large a gap to bridge given continued pressures on demand, competition, and lack of new product in our view. So, sounds like they are going to lower their estimates substantially. We would prepare for Tesla to initiate cost-cutting initiatives to help preserve margin rather than to double down on price cuts. While investor sentiment on Tesla is low, we believe consensus expectations must bottom before the stock can outperform. We look for earnings expectations to bottom in the second half of 2024. And I agree with this stock price reaction is negative but at the time of recording this it's surprisingly resilient i would have expected at least a 10 percent drop so i just finished recording the video i'm going through the video i checked tesla stock and what's going on it's not down as much as it was earlier it's going up it's still down but it's not down as much tesla is being really naughty here being down 4.69 percent and just changed to slightly more but keeping in mind that the markets overall today are down i uh, yeah if the markets were flat usually tesla stock drops substantially more than this index so i would imagine if nothing happened in the tesla world today tesla stock would have dropped about two percent anyway so without the markets being down we would be looking at 2.7 percent today and with news that bad i would expect the tesla to drop 10 percent so this is this is shocking to me are investors finally waking up to what's happening with fsd now of course when the market closes maybe by then the stock will drop further but as i'm recording right now i'm i'm i'm, I'm a bit speechless anyway
Let's continue the video. Meet Kevin is advocating for FSD price decrease. Someone who spends $12,000 on FSD today loses about 69% of the value instantly. Resale FSD appears to be worth around $3,800. Elon must draw the price of FSD. Otherwise, people are literally lighting their money on fire. This would dramatically help conversion. But I agree with Farzad. I think Tesla should just focus on pushing subscriptions while everyone is obsessing about tesla's deliveries no one is really paying attention to the tesla energy business which over time has proven to grow rather fast especially last year today we found out about rivian's q1 deliveries and rivian beat wall street consensus of 11,900 by delivering 13 and a half thousand vehicles someone should tell rivian investors that it's a good thing because they're jumping out of that stock. Rivian did miss production estimates though. G Monster says, I still believe Tesla is on the right track and this storm will pass. If you saw a better way to move a car and autonomy is a better way to get around. Tesla is investing in that feature while other car makers are slowing their investment. Absolutely correct. As Tesla's production was much higher than deliveries in Q1 and deliveries were much lower than in the previous quarters, the inventory measured in days of deliveries jumped to 30 days. This is still very low by industry standards, but it is higher before we were under 20. Look at this bullishness from Emmett Peppers. I can't help but wonder if today and in the coming days, a drop in Tesla stock might be the last great buying opportunity. I can't imagine Q2 delivery numbers not being way better. I can't imagine FSD take rate not inching up already. I can't imagine FSD not getting better still from here. I cannot imagine Cybertruck production RAM not improving further from here. DM sold almost 1700 Hummer EVs to dealers in Q1 of 2024, up 83,300% from the two sold in Q1 of 2023. My neighbor actually has one, it's pretty big. Interestingly, GM produced less Hummer EVs, even though it's been producing it for a while now, than how many Cybertrucks Tesla produced in Q1, despite Tesla just starting Cybertruck production. Here's some interesting news. Tesla is now officially Austin's largest private employer. Tesla boosts Giga Texas headcount 86% last year to almost 23,000 people. It surpassed grocery store chain HEB, according to a new annual compliance report. Ark Invest yesterday before the delivery report came out bought more Tesla stock. We also got new delivery report from China. And for the last week of March, actually, the deliveries were pretty solid. 17,300, which was the best week in the whole quarter. Potentially signaling that the demand in China it's coming back strong. AJ called it a monster number. The total number of vehicles sold in China as well as exported from Giga Shanghai came in at 89,000 for Q1. Tesla has made some changes to its referral program in the US. When someone uses your referral link, you now get 7,500 credits and not 10,000 like before. Also, the person using your link will no longer get one year of free premium connectivity, but they still get three months of FSD. I totally missed this one before. It is the beginning of the end. He's responsible for building Tesla's FSD. He's likely referring to FSD V12. Now, basically pretty much being the most popular FSD version installed in the Tesla vehicles, FSD 11, I believe is now actually below 50%. Just had my neighbor who has a Model 3 but doesn't follow Tesla closely come up and talk to me about his FSD trial. First time ever experiencing it and he was blown away. Wow, was the first word he used to describe it. He then asked how much was it to add? 16,000 Canadian dollars and he literally laughed and said never. Subscriptions will definitely help. Brian just got Tesla's latest FSD version and he says I can imagine reliable robot taxis technology being plausible within 6 to 12 months if these updates keep coming. Check this out. Just dropped off the Cybertruck at the Tesla service center and they loaned me a Tesla Model 3 performance with FSD. FSD 12 drove me all the way home almost two hours with zero interruptions. By the way, if you ever wonder what's the inventory like at GM, it's 80 days, not 30 like at Tesla. Supposedly the zero to 60 speed for the Model 3 Ludicrous is 2.9 seconds. That's a rumor, but 
That's what we're hearing right now. Swear has no idea when the Model 3 Ludicrous will be unveiled, but Marcus Brownlee, Jason Camisa, Rory from Auto Trader, and other big YouTubers, industry people were all spotted at the Tesla event today in Malibu where uh, we know the Model 3 Ludicrous is. Sawyer is guessing it's going to happen in the next 24 to 72 hours. So at this point, it is imminent. The Ludicrous version doesn't really look different from the standard Model 3. Just to be clear, you are looking at a performance or Ludicrous model here. And here's proof that Jason Camisa as well as Marcus Brownlee were at the event. Did you fall for any April Fool's? <laughs> pranks yesterday this is the only one that got me for a good 10 seconds tesla together with if metal agreed on a collective agreement supposedly yesterday april fools everyone galley from hyperchange just bought a little more tesla stock he says this reminds me of tesla's q1 2019 everyone's screaming end of the world of forgetting the long term 20 million cars per year self-driving vision there's an area for a tesla to educate the public on evs it's in these three buckets circled in red many people think that gas powered vehicles are safer to operate definitely not true more affordable to maintain. 54% of the people said gas cars. Nah, not true at all. More reliable. Also, definitely not true. EVs are more reliable than gas-powered vehicles. There's definitely a lot of room for Tesla to increase sales. And it seems like Alexandra is buying more Tesla stock. She dropped almost $40,000 on these Tesla stock purchases. But what's really at stake for the stock right now is really how well the company is able to pivot from being just a vehicle producer into being an autonomous vehicle producer and really embracing the, the AI potential of the platform. Um, you know, this FSD rollout that they're doing with this one month trial, uh, I think is going to be very instructive in terms of how the stock actually performs over the next 12 to 18 months. I think certainly that going forward, FSD is more important to Tesla's performance in terms of its stock price than it was before. Uh, from Wedbush, Securities Managed Director of Equity Research. Dan, I'm reading your report, which you wrote very quickly. Um, let's call it as it is. While we were anticipating a bad quarter, this was an unmitigated disaster. First quarter deliveries was a nightmare quarter for Tesla, you wrote. Elon is now pressured by the street and China demand remains very soft. And you also say, in this case, street criticism is warranted. But then I end... And you still have an outperform rating, and I wonder why. Hey, look, I mean, for the long term, like in terms of the actual opportunity for EV, for full self-driving, for autonomous, that's still there. But let's just call it like it is. This is no smoke and mirror. I mean, if you looked up train wreck in the dictionary, <laughs> you'd see a picture of Tesla's 1Q quarter. And, you know, I think the, the, the big problem is deliveries. How do you reverse the trend? And that's why I believe this is a fork in the road. In other words, Musk either turns this around, whether it's cutting prices, put the strategy in place, or David, I think we sit here maybe three, four quarters from now, and this is actually a seminal moment in the start what could be some darker days ahead if they do not turn this around. All right, but how, what does the turnaround look like? You say cutting prices. Clearly, they're facing more competition from Chinese EV makers, not just in the domestic Chinese market. So what do you do if you're Tesla? I think you have to weigh out the strategy. Okay, what, what are price cuts going to look like? When are the new models coming? What could software be as a percent of revenue? What's the AI roadmap? Right now, it, it's essentially playing darts blindfolded. You don't really have an adult in the room. The conference calls, as we've talked about here, ha have really been horror shows. So investors, they're hoping in terms of that, what's on the other side of this. Now, in terms of the growth, the opportunity, 30 billion in cash, they're in a phenomenal position from that perspective. But I'd say probably this is what I'd say in the last five years, probably the, the darkest period relative to what we're seeing in China. And this quarter, explanation mark. Nah, I don't think it's the darkest time that Tesla has gone through in the last five years. If you go back to 2019, early 2019, which is when I happened to become a Tesla stock investor. I'll look at the headlines. Tesla loses top manufacturing executive. And then just a few months before then, 
here's a list of high-level Tesla executive <laughs> departures. A list, not just one person, but a list. And right before the summer of 2019, it got bad, really bad. I mean, All right, but you talk about, um, you know, the hope of investors. You still clearly have hope as well. So what do you base your hope on? You've been, I mean, in the last two minutes here, you've been quite negative. Hmm? It's, it's that we're three, four percent of all, all automobiles or EVs. Is that full, full self-driving autonomous, you could argue that could be a trillion dollar worth of value from a software perspective. The China story You've seen the price cuts start to stabilize. They had a good week of the last quarter. So there are some optimism. And I still believe you could be toward 2 million units for the year. But this quarter, there's just no way to sort of glass half full it. I mean, this is one where even whisper numbers call it 415K. 386, a disaster. So is the is it supply or demand? Because we expected some production setbacks in the first quarter. Okay, know? I think supply would be dog ate the homework. Maybe call it 30K. You could explain that in a press release. But realistically, it's demand. And I think the problem here, Sarah, is that, okay, you're either going to cut prices or ultimately, like, you're going to hold serve and then focus on what you could actually do but hold margins and where volumes could go. The problem is, is that you can't just put one toe in the water. I think it is very clear that Tesla is very focused on solving FSD and clearly the progress of FSD. If you have seen yesterday's jaw dropping clip, whoa, <laughs> that runabout was absolutely nothing short of amazing. And I think where Elon Musk really shines is performance under extreme pressure performance during a crisis and i don't think we are in a crisis here but we are approaching a situation that is not exactly very welcomed by many investors and i think elon musk actually does perform better in situations like this so i actually expect elon to pay a little bit more attention to Tesla and I think he has been if you look at his X feed he has been posting more about Tesla in Q1 of this year compared to before that's going to be it for today's video like and subscribe if you haven't yet my name is Matt Postius YouTube says you should watch this video next and I will see you in the next episode thank you so much for watching